Today I'm going to take you on a little tour of my 630 square foot two car garage workshop. Let's go. As we walk into the shop, you'll notice I've got vertical lumber rack here. This side is all cherry, five quarter cherry. This side's all four quarter maple. Right as you walk in to the left, I've got my Oneida Super Dust Deputy plumbed through the wall. So we've got the dust collection, runs up through the unfinished ceiling. And there's the main tool island here. I have a four by eight assembly table, but I, I find myself using this bench much more frequently, mainly because it's got this little makeshift vise on it. It's got my sander, my vacuum, everything is all here. So it just makes sense to, to do most of the work over here. Speaking of the assembly table, this is kind of a assembly table slash router table. Uh, so you can loosen these up. And this can semi freely slide back and forth. If you don't need the fence, you can get rid of it. Underneath, I've got a two and three quarter horsepower Bosch. This thing is a beast. And I also built this little caddy tray shelf thingy for the majority of my router bits. It doesn't quite hold all of them, but it holds a, a fair amount of them. Uh, over here, I've got tools to change the router bit. And then when it's plugged in, we've got a nice switch there so I'm not reaching underneath when I'm trying to shut this off. Uh, why don't we go this way? That's just the water heater and lots of scrap wood storage down here. These are some dog bowl holders. Uh, over here, we've got the air compressor line that comes through the wall from the third bay. I've got all my gloves, fire extinguisher, things to create fire, all my finishing supplies. So I've got my mask, I've got these paint rollers. I use them for rolling glue on large surfaces. If I have a large glue up, it just makes it easier. They're fairly cheap, disposable. Same with the paint brushes. I get the two inch foam brushes. I like using these for stain, uh, putting on polyurethane and such. Up here, I've got my sharpening stones, some odds and ends some more paint brushes and whatnot. My collection of Celsius that I need to take back to get uh, the deposit on. Slop sink, just some random mineral spirits, acetone and whatnot. Spray gun is right there. That's a Husky from Home Depot. I think that was 40 or $50. And this one I've had some really good luck with. So I'll put a link to this and everything else in the description below. Moving on from the slop sink, I've got all my stains. My finishes, got this rolling cart over here. It's oh, probably 32 inches in length and about 18 inches deep. Stands a little bit lower than the rest of all my surfaces. And that makes it so I can take something off and, you know, for instance, a cabinet or a tabletop, and then it can roll out and it can go into the trailer. So this, this cart is just built from tool stand. It's meant to, or a tool holder. It's meant to, you know, go under the table saw actually came with the planer but it, in a stationary shop there's no I, I don't see a huge reason to have the mobile cart on there so i utilize it for this and it, it's real handy i can lock the wheels so they don't move just been handy lots of free space here so you'll notice there's uh, about nine or ten feet from this table to here to the door and the same with the table saw so i've got plenty of room back here to assemble things if I have a, a table or some cabinets that I need to lay out, there's plenty of room to do it here. This is also where I do a lot of my finishing. I can crack the door open and, you know, put a fan out there. And I do most of my finishing here and on that cart, actually. Moving on over to here, I've got my sheet goods storage for whatever sheet goods I may be using in the near future. A tripod that's in the way and doesn't need to be here. You'll notice anywhere there's wood, I always try to keep it up off of the concrete so i've got a sacrificial board here and i've also got one over there to keep the wood from pulling in any moisture from the concrete over here just got a little when six inch disc sander um, i don't use it a whole lot honestly up until the last couple months i used it mostly for sharpening pencils in here is a bunch of odds and ends i've got a lot of drill bits four center bit set my sandpaper Brad nails, got some cabinet hardware, some threaded inserts, 
figure eight fasteners. Moving over here, I've got the French cleat wall. I've got, you know, the majority of the tools that I'll use the most. Some of them I don't use that often, you know, like this planer there, I don't use hardly ever. The reciprocating saw doesn't really ever get used. That's a pneumatic stapler. Whole saw set doesn't get used a whole lot, but when I need it, it's nice to have it there. Got the Wen track saw. I've had that for going on three or four years now, I think, and it's not the most powerful thing in the world, but it gets the job done. I've got the Milwaukee angle grinder, Milwaukee circular saw, the nailer. Honestly, that's the reason I went with the Milwaukee line. As you can see, I had the air compressor turning on. We'll give that a minute. There we go. So as I was saying, I've got the rigid set here. I've got the impact and the drill, the brad nailer, the trim router. I've got plenty of batteries for it. I was getting into doing some framing on something at my previous shop. And at the time, Milwaukee was the only company that made a, an 18 volt framing nailer. So I bought that. And then a couple months later, went and bought this set when I left that out in the rain. So we've got our charger. For the rigids, charger for the Milwaukee's, uh, the trim router. Oh boy, this is a half inch impact. I bought this, honestly, I bought that to take a bearing off when I had my old planer to put the Shelix head in it. That's the only reason I bought that tool and I've used it maybe two times. But if you ever needed it, it's nice to have. Other than the main tools, I've got some odds and ends up there, some CA glue, some biscuits, belt sandpaper for the Ryobi belt sander. I guess moving on from that, I've got a 15 inch helical head jet planer. I picked that up beginning of the year and it's been a complete game changer to how I would work. I added this Wixie digital gauge and um, I don't think I could ever go back to an analog gauge, to be quite honest. It just, it's changed the, my workflow. It's changed how I do everything. You know, I don't have to do everything at once because I know I can press the button on there and get it right back to the same measurements. And if I mess something up, it just, it kind of, it's a mind game because you don't need that level of accuracy in woodworking. But now that I have it, it's very hard to go back. And the planer is plumbed into the dust collection. I've got a Y here that drops down to the jointer and the table saw, and then a reducer from the four inch to two and a half, because that's what plugs into the back of the table saw. Speaking of the table saw, it's a one and three quarter horsepower uh, DeWalt. And if I hadn't spray painted over the model number, but you can see it right there, the DW746. It comes pre-wired for 120 volt, but the motor is a dual voltage motor, so you can change it out to 220. Yeah, so I decided to paint this because yellow is pretty bright and uh, I don't like yellow. So now it's red. Moving on, we've got the workbench slash outfeed table. Uh, down here, I keep my, some of my electrical stuff. It has some edge banding, hot glue gun, stuff like that. I've got some mallets. I can never run out of glue, so I always keep a full gallon on hand. As soon as I crack open another one, I will go and buy a full gallon. That way I never run out. The end of the workbench, I've got my 6 and 12 inch clamps down here, as well as uh, 5 minute epoxy and my uh, glue bottles. I found it much easier to have the clamps right here on the edge of the bench. So if you're assembling something, you're gluing something up, uh, it's just real easy to grab another clamp. You need something to a whole piece of material down to the bench. Your clamps are right there. You don't go to walk over. This is where I previously had had them was over here. And um, you know, you're, you're doing something here and then you gotta trudge your way 15 feet over to the clamps over there. But no, uh, all joking aside, it's been real nice having them here. I guess moving on in a circle, since we started over there and then we came this way. We've got the six inch Festool ETS-150. That thing is awesome. If you're in the market for a new sander, I highly recommend you check it out. And just to show that I don't think you really always need expensive things. I think that was like $120. And the only reason I bought it was because about four years ago, I got a really good deal on a bunch of dowels, and this just happens to fit these dowels. So it seemed like a wise investment. Moving on over here, I've got the 8-inch G0856 jointer from Grizzly. I've had this now for almost four years. 
Uh, prior to this, I had a six inch rigid that I replaced the original cutter head with a Shelix head. Prior to that planer, I had a 13 inch rigid that also got the Shelix head replacement. If you've never used a planer that's got, or a jointer for that matter, that's got the carbide inserts, I highly recommend testing one out. Up on the wall behind the jointer, I've got my parallel clamps, F-style clamps, track saw, track. Up here, I've got a six and 12 inch combination square, marking knife, some dovetail tools, dovetail saw, the Katz Moses eight to one dovetail jig, a little Western style saw, this mallet that I made, ash handle, Kumaru head, uh, some Narex chisels, and they worked pretty good right out of the box, but after taking them over to the sharpening stones and getting them right up to 8,000 grit, hitting them on the strop, they cut like butter. I've got a coping saw here for doing hand cut dovetails. Some more cherry lumber stored up on the uh, wall here on these racks. 10 inch Wen bandsaw. I've had this bandsaw now for four or five years. And honestly, the first couple years that I had it, I didn't really use it because it didn't work that well. What I found was to make it work well, well, it has to be set up well. So I went in and I adjusted all the bearings. I made sure the table was square. I adjusted the fence. Old dust collector bin, put all my off cuts in. Can we just take a minute to admire this beautiful piece of maple for a second? For the miter saw, I've got a stop block that extends out to 55 inches to the wall, actually. And then, I don't know, 15 feet that way. And it connects with the radial arm saw over there. Up on the wall, we've got a 18,000 BTU Pioneer mini split heat pump unit thingy majiggy. Uh, works really well. I went through one winter with it already in a full summer. Yeah, we had a negative 15 degree day with wind chills up to negative 40 last January or February. And this thing, it kept it, you know, as it got colder and colder throughout the night, it did start to drop. And I think maybe we ended up around 65 or 66, but um, it worked really well. Moving on over here, I've got the 10 inch Craftsman radial arm. So I picked this up used about eight months ago for 50 bucks, I think. It's got a little, little bit of a wobble in the blade, but for rough cutting, it works just fine. It's got some projects that need to be finished up over here and that needs to go home. And we're at the lumber rack again over here. So you got your maple and cherry. And through this door, where the dust collector goes, Oh, it's dark out here because I shut the CNC off. But we got our four by four CNC machine over there from CNC for newbie. Uh, air compressor here that goes into the line that you saw inside. Uh, grizzly dust collector, it's plumbed through the wall there. And then in here, I've got some odds and ends, some short lumber storage. Sorry, it's not very bright out. It's like 4.30 in the morning. Uh, I've got about 200 board feet of maple drying in here, some cookies, odds and ends. I wish you could smell through the camera because it smells like maple syrup and cherries. It's a, it's a nice rich smell. Anyway, so we've got the CNC. This is the third bay that's attached. It's a uh, wooden floor. It's built up off the ground. Oh, it's got to be what, a 12 by 20? And up there I've got about 13 uh, 55 gallon trash bags full of sawdust that I donate to a local farm and they use for their chickens and in, in their gardens and whatnot. If you do that though, make sure you don't have any walnut that goes in with that. It's toxic to the animals. Speaking of walnut and sawdust, these are the floating nightstands that I had in a previous build. They're almost finished up. I just got to do a final sand in, but the grain wrap around goes from this side all the way around that way. And then it flows onto that side there. Half blind dovetail drawers. This one was done in maple and walnut. So when they're sitting on either side of the bed, or this actually may end up going in my living room under or on either side of the TV, but one will have maple and one will have walnut. Thanks for joining me on the 2023 shop tour here at Mountain View Woodworking. I hope you learned a thing or two or maybe got some inspiration for your shop. 
if you have some tips or pointers that I could use in my shop, maybe how to utilize the space a little bit better, leave them down in the comments. If you feel that I've earned your subscription, I'd greatly appreciate you hitting that subscribe button and give the video a like if you like what you saw. If you didn't, give me a comment below and tell me what you think I could improve upon. I've got a ton more projects coming up. I've got some cherry window trim, lots of cherry in the shop. So it's going to be a lot of cherry and maple projects uh, for the next coming months. Some floating kitchen cabinet shelf thingies that I need. Uh, a floating corner TV stand, possibly corner. It's a 65 inch TV and it's going um, upstairs where the walls are at a slant. So it needs to go as close to the wall as it possibly can. So it may need to be a little bit lower than a normal TV stand. So be sure to come back, turn on those notifications, subscribe, like, share, all those good things. I'd really appreciate it. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.